This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 501 for the week of Monday, January 8th, 2018. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And my name is Steve. Welcome to 2018, everyone, and the One Piece Podcast entering its 11th season. This is going to be a fun year, I am sure. Uh, As Oda promised, we'll get to the Wano arc and Reverie, I'm sure, by the end of the year. Right, guys? I mean, that'll happen. (laughs) Uh, On today's show, we have a manga recap of chapter 890, uh, Big Mom on the Ship. Pretty self-explanatory there. We also uh, will be doing a triple anime recap with Sam a little later, but before we get started, we have some special guests here today as usual. Very special guest and translator for One Piece in Weekly Shonen Jump, we have Stephen Paul with us. How's it going, Stephen? Hey, what's up? It's good to be back. Um, the 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 end of the year is always kind of funny for uh, for me and One Piece because the the um, publication schedule means everything gets shifted around, and I end up seeing stuff way way before it comes out. And uh, so I've been kind of on a One Piece vacation for like the last two weeks or so. So it's it's nice to be able to uh, to actually talk about it and think about it again. I feel like we all were. Uh, yeah, probably true. Yeah, yeah. It feels it. Th- this is. <laughs> If feel a little rusty uh, coming back. It's been a while since we uh, mm-hmm. recorded. Uh, well, then again, what was it? Christmas Day. I was recording some stuff for episode 500. So old Scrooge Zach over here and me working. Wow. I, I mean, I do that. As you may have, as Steve hinted, we do have our 500th episode out. It came out on Christmas Day. Um we also have on today's show, though, uh, Jeff Ruberg from Viz. How's it going, Jeff? Hey, uh, it is raining in San Francisco, so I'm double rusty. And it is San Are Francisco rain. Made of tin or something? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> rain in San Francisco, like the whole city shuts down just because uh, people aren't used to any rain. It's bizarre. How How is California, gentlemen? <laughs> it's raining again. It's not 10 degrees there, I'm guessing, is, is the I, big... <laughs> I can't believe I'm missing out on some, you know, SoCal uh, rain. But uh, you know, rain was so last year. I'm all about snow now. Yeah, snow's in in 2018. I'm back. I'm, I'm are a- you still? Are you still in New York? Well, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, a couple so, more days. Yeah. So um, you might, if you're hearing this episode, you might notice it sounds a little bit different. Hopefully, better um, than our usual episode we are trying out some new software if it works out we'll stay on it so please let us know what you think about it um in the comments today uh for this episode and and if you uh if you notice any marketable dis- difference please let us know uh but we have a show to get into so why don't we start with the manga recap right away you guys ready sure am mm-hmm This is the manga recap for chapter 890, Big Mom on the Ship. Ed, let's start out with the, I don't know if you have it in front of you, but the cover of Shonen Jump this week. I do. Yeah. Yeah, they've got uh, Zoro and Luffy with Hanafuda cards. Explanation. Yeah. It's the card game from Summer Wars. Don't think about it. I assume they are Hanafuda cards. It's very deep and poetic in Japanese. You probably wouldn't understand it. (laughs) <laughs> guys you're all my nak- nakama and that's what's important it's too deep for, it's very, for um, to be expressed in english guys yosh <laughs> oi, oi, oi. that's that's the uh, let's keep going into it anything you want to talk about with the cover page well i just want to thank our grand sponsor tokyo christmas <laughs> um yeah cool um <laughs> okay <laughs> but it's um it's cool to see the other characters of Shonen Jump in these uh cards that Luffy and Zoro both have. Um I guess we're also gearing up for Wano uh might be part of this. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. It's Japanese. It's, it's a Japanese magazine, man. Just let it go. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I think that Zoro has like the troll hand here because in his hand he is sleeping and Sanji is on fire with rage. So I feel like he's uh he's very proud of that. Yeah, there's all sorts of characters from various um, Shonen Jump properties on these cards. But no, Tori- like the All Might Tori- card. The all- yeah. <laughs> or Nisa Koi. Nisa Koi. Nisa Koi. 
uh, Jeff, you're going to say something? <laughs> we can't use that as a title. That's good. Why not? <laughs> it's too early. Uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, let's talk about the color spread, Ed. It's the Chinese zodiac. So we've got dog, snake, sheep, ox, as that pheasant or bird, rabbit, monkey, uh, tiger, um, horse, dragon, and big mom. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get that. I did not get that. Is, is she big mom to- is the boar. Oh, it says She's right the there. <laughs> I didn't... Of course she is. Who, who's I the pig? Probably just... That's that's what a boar is. Are you yeah. talking to me? <laughs> is um, uh, is Manchuri supposed to be uh, the mouse or? Uh, yeah. is it a mouse yeah. or a rat? The rat. Uh, yep. Rat. Okay, I missed. She's, she's she's a... I read this on my. Go ahead. Are you saying she's a dirty rat from, from the mm-hmm. departed? She's a, she's a cop. She's a cop. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I saw my phone earlier. I did not see the Chinese zodiac there. So this makes a lot more sense to me. Now. Really? <laughs> I, I, I picked up on this right away without even seeing the. Well, look, I'm thing. not as into Japanese culture, apparently. Oh, um, you're not into the Japanese culture of the Chinese zodiac, Zach? <laughs> got me there, Steve. You got me there. Um, it's, want, should we just start? Or is there well, it's nice to see um, Califo again. I. I did yeah. enjoy that that sheep bit from Andy's lobby, but I really like the colors in this one. Uh, it pops. I think uh, Oda when, loves rainbows. Well, when you have so uh, Oda was playing uh, a lot of Mario Kart. <laughs> well, he. Uh, I hate that level. He put. Oh. Uh, well, it depends what game you play. Rainbow Road is pretty good in sixty four, but Marco and no, you keep falling off, and then you. Uh, sorry, can Steve. I just talk about One Piece? <laughs> no. Why am I the <laughs> no, one? You know that, how it feels. <laughs> so why am i the one begging to stay on topic uh i do like placing marco and uh and big mom towards the back the uh the blue purple and pink really pops on that uh teal background uh i think the uh choice uh, in boa hancock's attire was deliberate i think if she was in red she would kind of look like she was uh attached to uh dog storm's back so uh i can see that it, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, the colors are really nice. I'm looking forward to seeing this on the 2019 color spread calendar. Exactly. <laughs> and it's also nice to see Momonosuke giving the side eye to uh, Carrot molesting Luffy's ear. <laughs> um, Sam, I, I, I loved your tweet, man. I thought it was funny. Sam's not here. Uh, I, Sam's obviously listening. At Twitter.com slash Lucky Chainsaw. <laughs> Sam's not here, man. Um, okay. I have, I have faith that Sam is listening. I thought you might have been confused there for some reason. Let's start with the chapter, unless there's any more thoughts you guys have on the color spread. No, it's beautiful, yeah. but yeah. Um, so you get sort of the five, uh, the view from up high here at the beginning, and people are wondering what's going on and why is Mama so slim. And these are the questions coming from her own her own people, of course. So she must be so hungry. Uh, <laughs> It's been many years since I saw Mama so nimble, and uh, what's his face, uh, Genie Weenie is, is he's dumbstruck. Basically, he can't say a word. Um, Daifuku, Daifuku, right? Genie Weenie, and ac- across the ocean we hear Big Mama's gurgle. Her stomach is rumbling all over the place. She's so hungry, but nothing else will satisfy. Except what it is, she wants the wedding cake, and she pulls up the thousand sunny in what looks like it almost looks like it's liquefied in the in the amount of uh, force she's using to kind of pull up on the door. Just use the handle. Just use the handle, Big Mom. Um, All of a sudden, I hate Big Mom. Like, what the hell? The sunny's not supposed. This is supposed to happen to the sunny. Yeah, it's it's not the going merry. Yeah. Come on, she's you can't terrifying. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad they chose the voice actress that they did. It's part of uh, because I I just watched all the the Mobile Suit Gundam movies, and she's also the voice of Shelia Zabi. Ah, so she is. She's got these very sinister sort of sort of lines to deliver. Yeah, and I'm sure we're gonna mention through this chapter, but I'm I'm a big fan of this particular big mom transformation. Um <laughs> Well you know it, it links her to her past a lot closer than we thought. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it, it kind of explains skinny mom. It must uh, take an incredible the, amount of energy to be choice. big mom. Like <laughs> yeah, like, I, like she's so strong. Like, have you seen how much like power lifters have to eat? Like she's just sort of she just hasn't been exercising very much lately. She's clearly very strong. 
but like she doesn't have a I, she hasn't had a reason to get out of bed lately, basically. I just didn't realize there were so many nutrients in cakes and and sweets. I, <laughs> I I mean, yeah, okay, let's if we could move on. Um so Chopper is reacting, she's breaking the sunny, and uh Brooke is trying to devise how, or not even trying to devise, just saying, how can we drive her away? And Carrot is passed out. Uh and Jim Bay is pleading with her to uh to stop um and big mom turns and and realizes it's not here it's not here she pulls up i I assume a different door um and jimbe says there's no cake on this ship and big mom responds nonsense that can't be true my son said it would be here and my son doesn't ever lie he's not a creepy little guy um (laughs) he's quite large and creepy he's yeah to be fair he's a he's a tall guy but for her she's a tiny little guy he's a tiny little guy anyway he said she says if it's not here i would have to take the life of my eldest son steven Mm, and then, uh, yeah, on the next page, we see this is basically like the the anime, the, the Prospero version of him <laughs> tucking a finger under his collar and going, gulp. Uh, he's like, <laughs> she remembers. How conscious is she right now? Which, you know, I, to be fair, like I, I I was like kind of pleased that Oda actually brought that up again, that uh, that, that became a thing that Prospero had lied to her and uh, she had had uh, menaced him. Um, so now he realizes he's in, uh, in deep doo-doo. Uh, he thought he could fool her and, uh, big mom is, uh, she's fighting the good fight for her son's reputation. I don't appreciate you calling my son a liar. And, uh, then she calls upon Napoleon, uh, to, to transform. Uh, here we go. And she, uh, I, I don't know if this is her or if this is Napoleon who says cognac, um, which uh, is uh, Napoleon is a classification of cognac. It's one of the fancier kind. I, I forget what the actual uh, you know requirements are to be uh, to be labeled a Napoleon cognac. But um, uh, at any rate, now he is not only a sword, but he is also on fire, and uh, he is going to slice Jimbe into two burning pieces. Um, and Chopper describes what we all saw. Uh, with the giant flaming sword and uh, Nami implores Jimbei to to run for it and uh, Jimbei uses a move called a uh, Kairagi glaze which um, is it, it's basically redundant uh, the the original thing was just Kairagi which is a type of uh, like lacquerware glazing um, and so I just you know basically added the glaze at the end because uh, now you can go google it and see all the pretty pictures but uh, he seems to be using some some kind of armament hockey uh, type uh, toughening on his arms there and Big Mom uh, you know just smashes him with uh, the sword and says Mama Mash um, she did the mash yes yeah, she <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> She did the mash and uh, Prospero is stunned that uh, he he actually blocked it, um, that it didn't just completely cut him in half. And uh, as as they are in this locked in the stalemate uh, with uh, Jimbei's uh, forearms uh, apparently sizzling there, uh, she is taunting him. Do you think you can win? And we turn the page. A battle of strength, you slippery little shark. And she uh, slams him really far. <laughs> a little bit. This was a, a good surprise because I was like, oh, he actually blocked it. No, he, he blocked it, but that didn't really do much. He goes flying it. Yeah, he, he didn't die, but he goes flying into the sea. Um, and Brooke is looking on, oh, no, Jimbe. And then Mama's just laughing. Ha, ha, Mama, where is it? Where is that cake? I'm practically dying of hunger. And I guess the, the ship is still cracking. And oh, she's cutting through another door there. And uh, Nami screams out, stop it, big mom. And she thinks to herself, carrots in that room. So needs to stop the sword before it cuts through her. And mama is like, if you want to, if you want me to stop, then you better fess up and continues to slam through. And we see Nami fly to one direction, Chopper fly to another direction. And Chopper screams out, Nami, Nami's okay. And then, and then Brooke notices that, uh, Mama's hair is setting setting fire to the sail, which this is the first time I noticed that her hair wasn't just hair. I thought it was like artistic lessons, <laughs> this whole chapter, that it was really uh flamey, but then it's like, no, it's it's literally flame right now. Well, <laughs> um, that's where Prometheus is. That's that's the flame. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. 
Um, and she's thinking, where could you have hidden that enormous cake? And someone screams out, I guess, Brooke to Nami, her to stay away. She's picking up her climate tech. Her weather weather stick there, I guess. Climate tech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The weather stick. <laughs> um, <laughs> weather stick. Steve. And then um, Big Mom's big hand comes crashing down, but lands on Big Guard Point Chopper, who saves the day, protecting Nami. Um, uh, we get a reaction from Nami, uh, a cute reaction from uh, Fierce Chopper. And uh, Mama is quite pleased when she says, Why, you're even stranger than I thought. With a heart emoji. <laughs> so you know. It's a woman talking. <laughs> I kid. Um, <laughs> easy, fellas. <laughs> and Brooke's doing the cool panicking, looking in both directions. He's like, our ship, our ship is burning. Oh, dear. We got to put it out before the, the entire ship burns down. Water, water. And I really wish Jim Bay did something really corny. Like, did someone say water? And we get a big ocean current uh, shoulder throw. Uh, it's in a, it's a, attack that we've seen Jimmy use before coming right out of the ocean right towards big mom and with a big splash blarg fish it hits the thousand sunny hitting prometheus who lets out a big yell yow ow ow ow, ow damn it it's like that water uh that water drenched me and uh, brooks like you did it jimbay uh just a quick question this isn't ocean water right yeah, oh, it, i mean it is, is ocean it? Water, i thought like isn't it I thought everything in Big Mom's territory was like some like juicy juice or some crap. Not all of it. Oh, well. Okay. Some of it. Yeah. I I, I think we have to assume it's Mm -hmm. ocean water. Uh, There's no reason otherwise to think that it's any sort of other consistent. I mean, is this a little. If it was juice, where are the eggs? (laughs) Yeah. Where are the eggs? (laughs) Uh, I I just feel it's a little inconsistent that it hasn't really weakened Brooke or Big Mom. I figured just Big Mom's big, so it would take a lot more. Uh, a lot more water, despite that being a lot of ocean water to hit her to kind of stop her in her tracks. But Brooke seems to be okay, so I don't know. Just something. I don't really care that much. I'm just bringing it up. <laughs> Wait, uh, Brooke, Brooke also walks on ocean water. So, yeah, but I mean, it's it's. But he's still on top yeah, the, of it. Yeah. Like I, I, I always think back to oh. Alabasta when the water starts seeping in, and it's like just over like Luffy's uh, calves and it starts to weaken him. But I think Oda has been way less consistent with the ocean water thing recently. <laughs> this is me. But the rules, Oda, you got to remember the rules. <laughs> I mean, I always assumed it like weakened them in respect to their power. So I think it would make sense. I, I think it makes sense for, for mom to weaken her like mm. soul powers, but Brooke, like, I mean, it's not gonna like make him less he's not, revived. He's not getting any debtor, Thimble, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a one-time deal. Uh, yeah, but exactly. Anyway, <laughs> Mama glares over at Jim Bay, who, <laughs> who uh, Jim Bay. I feel like he's a priest trying to exercise the demon in Big Mom, saying, "Be gone, Big Mom, <laughs> be gone." <laughs> Throwing I mean, an old priest and a young priest. Uh, and then he lets out another attack. Fishman karate secret art. Uh, and mom is just like, then give me my cake. She's very simple. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stop. I just want my cake. Um, yeah. Anyway, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. And then turning the page. So uh, she interrupts his attack, but then he finishes the vagabond drill and kapows her in the stomach and that that's not her dress right those are like impact lines yes target okay <laughs> i couldn't remember what a dress quite looked like um but yeah she, no, that, she that's the large version of miss wednesday's dress <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then she uh is glaring and we see a couple panels we don't really know what's happening and she just falls right off the ship um and zeus goes to catch her um does a dramatic Dramatic boom! Chopper, Chopper celebrating. Perrin is uh, confused. They they all celebrate. They drove her off. They had to stop. Is the that manage. what it looks like? <laughs> um, it's hard to tell. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, uh, and then don't slow the ship. Don't slow down the ship. If Paris, if Paris catches up to us, it's, it's truly the end. 
hurry, Big Mom will cover it once. So they're ready to, uh, and they're checking if Carrot's okay. And Mom is recovering. And then she thinks, ah, yes, I've just come up with a wonderful idea. I'll slice it open. And she's thinner than ever. Uh, and she's got the hair, like the evil face. Uh, it's great. Uh, the, the sword extends like halfway across. It's the, more than the width of like one page because these are two page images. And uh, it's just like, it's brilliant, Mama. And then I'm certain to find that wedding cake. Her eyes. She's this getting is a great page layout. I just want to <laughs> chime in with that. Well, what a great way to convey that. Um, it's really cool. And like the sword is growing even more. It's as big as Big Mom now. Like it's even bigger than like it was before. Um, yeah, the sword is Chopper comments. The sword is stretching. Yeah, when she starts swinging that thing around, the ship is done for at last. Uh, um, but Nami sees a better position now, though. She calls it to Oh Zussi, um, Remember how much you love these? <laughs> Got a whole bunch to eat. <laughs> um, I'm not falling for that again. Stop trying to tempt me, foul seductress. <laughs> and we all think Nami has gotten shocked, but no, nah, it's just broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised Oda's never done that joke. You can well, tell she's strong in her face. Yeah, that's... Look at the, like the like the two dots and her smile. Yeah. It's it's zoom in on that. That's tremendous. That's a... <laughs> oh my god, that is tremendous. I'm screen capping that at this all moment. The way in. Um, um, okay, and uh, because Brooke does not have flesh yeah. to sear, his the, the lighting will do nothing to him. And uh, yeah, Mom, Big Mom's like, you picking a fight with me, Soul King? Do you remember how your sword failed to put a scratch on me? And Brick's like, of course I remember. So how about you give me a glimpse of your panties instead? Hmm? Uh, undergarments? Is that? Sure. Uh, he's, he's being very old fashioned. No, I like, I love that he says for her, it's like she's a classier woman. Let me say undergarments when I harass you know, it's her. That's funny. I was watching their first conversation. Pantaloons. It's, in the anime, <laughs> and um, he actually refers to her um, basically using a term for someone younger than him, which shocks her, and she's kind of offended by it, but he's also, like, always the oldest person in any room that he's in. Yep, yep. Oh, that's that's yeah, cool. I never that's realized why I didn't, that. That's why um, I didn't use I the translation that, granny so. panties Thanks instead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we are now on the next page as Big Mom uh, is confounded by the question that Brooke just asked. Um, I don't know if she's happy about it. Sat, I, I don't know how to gauge. How would you guys gauge this reaction? I think you I mean clearly it's a distraction tactic, but I think and I think it worked. Yeah, she's like she's off guard. But the person it's people it distracted the most were Nami and Chopper, horrified by the prospect of finding out how this would work. Um, anyway, uh, Brooke, while having distracted her, as Ed, Ed so astutely put it, said they're already done. Um, and this is his three paced hum. Uh, soul notch slash definitely one of my favorite brook moves here i love the oh you've already been cut moves um and we find out that it wasn't big mom who's been cut but zeusy i'm sorry zeus <laughs> <laughs> uh and brook said yes the target from the very beginning has been you zeus and zeus astounded says huh and then nami uh plays her cards here with her electric charge black balls, which are what they sound like, and releases their charge. Um, Hell yeah. And uh, Zeus, okay. Uh, Zeus, <laughs> uh, Zeus feels betrayed. Uh, what's what's next, Steve? Let's finish this chapter off. After Well, after the electric black balls got discharged. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Let's have a big shock. Um such a big shock it even like knocks the sunny back a bit mom is being electrocuted we get this awesome close-up of her with the heavy blacks of her getting shocked and uh this is uh oh who's who's mr twizzler hair again uh what's his name oh man bavaroa bavaroa um he's like mama this can't be happening they discharge zeus into oblivion uh and I'm sure this is Jimbei saying that bought us some time. And they're like, hurry up, Brooke. And uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, it's Prometheus yelling out to Mama as uh, Brooke darts across the ocean uh, <laughs> saying, hurrying, <laughs> as he's getting back <laughs> on the sunny. And a little bit of time passes, and Nami, Chopper, and Brooke all celebrate, we did it. And 
they both say that was amazing, Brooke. Uh, and Jim Bay, who's, you know, who's the Debbie Downer of, of, of this group. He says, like, well, we minimized the damage as best we could, but this ship still took quite a beating. And Brooke walks up holding an unconscious uh, Zeus, uh, an adorable plush. Buy it now at the uh, Mugiwara store. And I'm, 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 I'm off. I'm going to go get that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Brooke says, oh, I don't think he has the feistiness to trouble us anymore. And Nami says, oh, Zeus, with a heart emoji. She says, oh, Zeus, you have been, you've been, you've been under a misconception. I was asking, I wasn't asking you to be friends with me. Let me state the question one more time. Will you be my servant or will you die like a dog? And, uh, <laughs> perfect. Die like a dog. <laughs> Died like a dog. Uh, and Zeus is quivering, looks adorable. Uh, I really like the sequence. Nami's so great. Um, I love it. She, you know, she could turn on a dime like that. Um, and then meanwhile, uh, yes. uh, after them, Prometheus. Yes, mama. Uh, Prometheus looks. His even, eyes are crazy too. Oh, uh, he's he's even got the crazy eyes now. Uh, and Mama is sitting on Prometheus, a la Goku on the on the Kintone. Well, the but it's fire. Place. It's not a cloud now. It's fire. <laughs> yeah. They have the Straw Hats have the cloud. <laughs> Would you say uh, she's walking on the sun? Oh, how long were you saving <laughs> that, Steven? I, I just Steven, thought of it, it right it ain't now. No joke. It ain't no joke. <laughs> oh, I wish I had. If you told me that ahead of time, I could have put it on the soundboard and just played it right now. Um, oh my which god! Is a thing, apparently. If we have soundboard capabilities now, oh bro, yeah, that's oh. that's. I'm, I'm not testing that out right now. Um, there's enough. There's enough things that I'm worrying about here. It ain't no joke. That's for sure. Um. <laughs> It ain't no joke. Uh, Sorry, Ed. I know you said that before. <laughs> uh, so that'll do it for chapter 890. Let's go around the horn, see what everyone thought of this chapter. Jeff, let's start with you. Oh, um, so this chapter, I mean, I thought it was a great, a great, um, I don't know, a, a climactic point for this, this chase. We get to see their teamwork, you know, actually achieve something against her, even though she's not really set back by it. And I love how, I feel like the idea of her getting thinner and thinner and this, it felt like I could see how maybe that was like the core concept. I'm just speculating, but like that, that could be the core concept for big mom as an entire entity that like this, this giant monster that like is chasing them. And as she's chasing them, she's getting thinner and scarier um, as she's expending energy and desperate to, to eat them, but not eat them, but you know what I mean? And so I feel like we're, it feels like we're approaching like stuff that's like core to why big mom exists. And I, I love the paneling of the, the, it's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like a full spread, but the, the, the image where she's the thinnest we've ever seen her and the sword is extending into the other page. And it's, it's great conscious there as she's showing her idea to cut through the ship vertically or horizontally. Um, and it's just a, a great chapter, a uh, great, funny, great funny stuff too, with uh, Brooks, Brooks distraction tactic. And yeah, just an overall great chapter. And I think this will be pretty memorable looking back at the, looking back at the arc. Yeah. I mean, definitely for these secondary characters as a standout moment. Um, Ed, we don't usually get to do you or uh, have you talk about it early. Let's, let's try that this week. Sure. Um, Big mom continues to escalate in intensity. Like she is, flicking away Jim make like Jim can stand up to her a little bit, but she sort of flicks him away into the ocean like he's nothing. And he was a warlord. He was one of the strongest characters in the series at the time that we met him. And it's just like her power is so like absolutely that it takes such a cooperative effort by the straw hats. And she's already in such a disadvantageous position because of her rage that she's put herself over the ocean and sort of not fully able to defend herself. Like this is the only way that the straw hats could win, especially with Luffy being out of the picture for so long at this point. Um, it, it, it keeps them in there, but she's just she's going wild. This like Prometheus, like it, like it, it can grow. Like it, I wonder if it's just like her rage is how big the sword can get. Like how like how big can it actually be? Um, but like when she like um like hacks overhead into the like her tongue is sticking out of her mouth and she looks absolutely like freaked. It's um so good. Like she's the she's by far the best part about this chapter. And um, I, I, although I do appreciate Paraspera being a sniffling little shit 
So <laughs> uh, he's, he's been great. that the entire arc. I know, and he does it every time. But like, and I <laughs> now that even her soul people have like crazy Naruto eyes. Um, yeah, she's like she's she's losing it. Like we're going into the, the end of this fight here. Like I don't know how much more of this she can take without like. Free, like just destroying everything or killing herself. Good question. Uh, Steve, what did you think of this chapter? It was fun. Um, it was, uh, and it's like the equivalent of like a monster truck derby. It was just lots of destruction. Uh, maybe some guy uh, promoting it, yelling Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, but it was just a, a lot of cool techniques. Uh, from uh, Big Bomb, of course. Uh, I Like I mentioned earlier on one of Ed's pages, I love the page layout uh, of, uh, of uh, the sword uh, extending. I thought that was really cool. Uh, and also it has like the diagram of the Thousand Sunny being split in the middle. Uh, but everyone had uh, some time to shine in this. Uh, I think talking back, uh, I think with Tress Rosa, uh, I was really looking forward to seeing this half of the crew go on an adventure because uh, they're not the, they're, they're, well, besides Brooke, they're the younger portion of the crew. They're not the experienced fighters. And I just, I feel the weight more of the peril they're in. Uh, and it's just really cool to see them uh, break out cool fighting techniques. Uh, Chopper got to do a little bit of it. Um, Brooke got a ton of shine. Uh, and Nami got to do some like devil woman stuff that she does. Uh, you know, like, like I said, her turning on a dime of her pretty much, uh, making Zeus, uh, crap out, you know, little pieces of hail. He's so scared. Um, but yeah, just a lot of great action shots. Uh, I also kind of thought I'm looking forward to seeing this animated because big mom's fiery hair, uh, that with, uh, that with her pink color scheme, it's going to look pretty cool, I hope. Um, but uh, I, I feel like Jinbei is such a great fit to this crew. Like, this is all, this feels very natural, his interactions uh, here and his actions. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think we're getting to that point. Like, it, I don't know how, like, how much higher we could go in stakes. I think... I think with just Katakuri before, I think that was referenced as the climax. I think this is also the, uh, we're getting close to the climax with Big Mom. Mm -hmm. I could see this all coming, starting to come to a close in the next couple chapters. I'll take a guess. You know, Steve, you were talking about wanting to see this in the uh, anime, animated, and uh, I do as well for the additional reason of like, Mami Koyama as Big Mom is like the best it's the happiest I've been with a casting decision since I think Caesar clown hmm. uh, with Ryu. Sanicata. I, I, I can, uh, she's like, she's been spectacular in the last three episodes. I just watched three episodes back to back for the anime mm -hmm. recap and she's tremendous. And she, she improves every episode that yeah. she's in. It's uh, I, I agree. I, I remember her fights with Brooke. Uh, her performance was excellent. Uh, I mean, she's a well experienced actor, so it, Makes all the sense, but uh, perfect casting, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this uh, animated in uh, like next year or maybe around the end of this year. Uh, but other than that, it's just mm -hmm. fun. Like this is this is a cool action chapter, uh, and I'm glad that this is uh, this is a great example of action One Piece because action One Piece isn't always just a one on one fight, uh, and uh, I mean. I think, and we also don't get enough uh, battles at sea. So I think that's yeah, think that's, that's what we've talked about over the years. And while this isn't quite uh, the Straw Hats fighting a bunch of other pirates on the ship, like in We Are or any of the other openings, this is still it basically is. Yeah, it, I mean, uh, it's actually crazier than anything. We saw <laughs> oh, oh yeah, for sure. We are, we go. Uh, Big Mom <laughs> is much crazier than a bunch of random schmuck pirates and uh, Panda Man. So. Uh, yeah, but it's not what is it wake up or shining uh what is it screaming running forever um or whatever. <laughs> uh, there's not a bunch of random admiral battles but it's still pretty cool steven what did you think of this chapter 
Uh, I definitely agree with Steve that I think we are getting to a, a climax of this uh, sequence. And, you know, really this whole uh, kind of chase, this extended chase sequence that else started with the uh, the collapse of the uh, whole cake chateau um, has, you know, it's been remarkably consistent in the sense that like, uh, you know, the, the, the straw hats and their, their various allies have been consistently sort of, making these, uh, you know, working these miracles to, um, to get away from big mom. And in each case, uh, she comes back even more terrifying than before, which is, uh, you know, I think in this situation, it actually serves to enhance everything because it makes big mom, uh, more menacing as a, as a villain. And it also makes each successive, uh, you know, get away each, each little bit of, uh, you know, bravery and, uh, you know, excitement from the, the straw hats themselves to get away from her, you know, that much more thrilling and, um, uh, you know, convincing as a, uh, kind of a, a, this sort of thrill ride continues. Um, I like that he has kind of changed her design. Like she's kind of gone from, uh, from being the, the sort of, uh, uh, you know, this this sort of uh, Lenny from Mice of Men, like, you know, brute brute strength, but sort of dumb, uh, you know, especially in her like starving state and her hunger pangs where, uh, you know, combined with what we've we've seen of her in the past, you know, she kind of comes across as this like very unpredictable sort of force of nature who's also a little dim. But now she looks more like he, I think he's going for more of like a. um uh, sort of like a, a Buddhist or Hindu, like an Ashura, you know, sort of a demon fighting demon uh, design with all the, um, you know, the evil expressions and the the flowing hair and uh, stuff like that. It's super uh, crazy looking and um, very menacing. I would not necessarily have expected them uh, based on the very first couple of times we saw Big Mom. Um, so I, I like what he's doing with that. And uh, I, I think it is also really significant that she was actually tearing up the Sunny because, you know, that was a thing that happened a lot with the uh, with the going Mary, um, you know, like when Wapple was eating it and all the various things. And, you know, Oda was like consistent to it. You know, he would, he would show Usopp trying to repair the ship afterward. And, uh, you know, it obviously was part of a extremely significant story development later on. And obviously they do have Frankie now, although he's not here in in this arc, but, um, uh, you know, it may not be as, uh, you know, noteworthy as, as it happened before, but this, this is still like the first time we've really seen the Sunny get messed up. And, uh, I, I kind of have to wonder like if that's going to, um, to, to lead to other developments in the, uh, the future. Um, but, uh, I think I am also, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm ready for the, the climax now. I think, I think we've, you know, we, we've seen a lot of, uh, the various, uh, you know, side, the, the parallel stories that have been playing out at, over this part of the arc. And I, I'm kind of ready to see how it all ties together and uh, how, how we're going to get that cake to her. Because, um, I, you know, it, we've been doing this for a while now. I, I think we're ready. <laughs> this chase is going to be so strange or it's going to be so different to be able to read in one go. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I just want to add uh, to what Stephen was saying. Uh, in Tresorosa, we really focused on one group of characters for the most part. Um, I'm going to forget some here, but but Zoro, Robin, uh, Usopp, Frankie. Um, am I forgetting any? Uh, obviously, Luffy. But um, <laughs> and in this one, we have uh, Nami, Chopper, uh, Brook, um, and. Am I forgetting any there? Let me talk. Jimbei. Jimbei. But the Ooh, one I wanted to mention it. is we have Th go. Thousand Sunny here, uh, who was largely absent in Tresrosa, and Oda treats his ships like characters, as you might know. So um, even though it's been just getting t torn apart for uh, this specific portion, I think the Thousand Sunny has played an important role in this arc. Um which is which is cool to note, and it's mm -hmm. it's taking its own beating, which I think everyone here has in in some regard. Um, I'll echo what everyone else said. I think Big Mom is definitely the star of this chapter. Um, we see a very different yet um, in character side of her. Um, this like none of this is is especially surprising, but it's especially cool. Um, I guess is the way I would put it. Um, and I think some of her facial expressions, I, th I forgot who on Twitter pointed out the one on it's page 1415 on the, um, 
on the Shonen Jump issue, just just of her after she gets soaked by Jimbei, just that like her rising back up and preparing to you know fight again look is especially badass. Um, mm. I have no other way to put it. And yeah. and Zeus and Prometheus too, I think, uh, and Napoleon uh, play some really cool uh, roles here. And, and yeah, I'm I'm just. Uh, I was really impressed by this chapter. I don't know if this is going to go down as an especially memorable chapter at the end of when all is said and done and be like, oh, that, remember that one? Maybe it will. But at the very least, it was a really enjoyable ride this week. I have a question for everyone, though. Uh, um, so Brooke cut through um, Zeus. So um, you think he actually looked at her panties? <laughs> yes. I mean, he was down there. It seems like he's wanted to do it to every female character, I'm like, I'm, I, which I'm kind of sick of, but like the fact that it played into the story this time was like, okay, I, I'll, for, you know, it makes sense that it would distract her and you'll actually, instead of just doing the joke. Uh, a gentleman never tells. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, but I feel like it's the kind of gag that they're... Brooke, no Brooke is the only one. No one cares. No one yeah. cares except for Brooke. Brooke anyway. does carry them. Um, I think that's going to yeah. do it for our manga recap. Um, why don't we go into our next segment? Segment, you guys ready? Woo-hoo. All right. Mm-hmm. This is the triple anime recap for episodes 818, 819, and 820. I'm your host Sam, and today with me we have once again, as always, we've got Ed. <laughs> Hello. And joining us today, we also have Kelly. Hello. How's it going, Kelly? Great, thanks. All right, so we have quite a bit to cover. Like, not not only do we have three episodes, but that last episode has, like, so much going on in it. Yeah, Um, I mean, there's the great Sanji flashback episode, too, as well. Like, actually, um, watching all these three together made me appreciate how uh, Sanji and Pudding are. Uh, So, episode... 818 begins, uh, is called The Undaunted Soul, Brooke versus Big Mom, and the title card begins at 4 minutes and 17 seconds. Uh, that was a really cool fight, some... too. Yeah. Uh, we open with uh, some sad Sanji. He's He's been eavesdropping in on Pudding. The last time we did the an- did an anime recap, we were talking about Pudding uh, and, her, and her three eyes. Uh, we are introduced to Pudding's memory powers, where she's able to just like put her hand right into, Re- into Reiju's head pull it out it's a little suggestive <laughs> she pulls out this big reel of film and it's kind of funny how they've actually got like screenshots from the show to represent like the different frames of the film i guess um you know i mean it's probably they probably just drew them that way but like i i, I understand what you mean they could be like you could just they, take, they take look them. like that yeah. they, they, they don't look like they're uh and they, they look framed like they're for, for it looks cool and i do appreciate how they don't de-emphasize how sexual it looks but like this is still like my least favorite part of this entire arc is her power yeah it's, this. like really i thought the the art quality was a definite improvement during this scene than it was compared to the actual like putting reveal episode oh, like the the moment where she she pulls the the reel out of rage's head like just like you know the way it's drawn just like cool really animation pops, but like Story wise, I don't like. Yeah, it's no, it's much. it's definitely not my favorite. <laughs> although there are very few things about pudding I can actually say that I like. But I do agree with you, Sam. It looked really well. The composition of just the way the film was and everything. There were some great screenshots from that episode. I also like how we get sort of a we we get to see Reju getting shot from like her point of view, and then we also get to see that scene where uh, Reju met Pudding in the hallway, and Pudding was acting all innocent and. Uh, at the time, it was kind of weird because, like, why is Pudding acting innocent now? Like, Reiju should have saw her, but then, uh, you know, Pudding just puts the evil face on right away. I'm still not quite grasping. Maybe it's not Devil for Power that bothers me the most about Pudding. It's the why she reveals to Reiju that she is evil Pudding in the first place. Well, because she likes to is be it theatrical, only so we- I think. I guess, but it's like it's such a stupid thing to do on the evening of her wedding. Like, I mean, I mean she has the ability to just wipe it from her mind. No. And, and she's confident that not, there's not going to be any consequences. I mean, she did the same thing with Luffy and Nami. When you think about it, she didn't need to tell him. She enjoyed telling yeah. him. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we come to Big Mom facing this off. Whole family's fucked yeah. up. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Big Mom and Brooke facing off. 
uh, <laughs> Big Mom's telling Brooke, oh, you've got some balls. Which is funny because he doesn't have any balls. Yo ho ho. <laughs> See, that's why I know that it was a translator's joke because Brooke does not make a skull. <laughs> um, Brooke can't seem to get past uh, Prometheus and Zeus's powers. He then decides to break out the guitar and he's he's jamming out and it's almost it looks like it's starting to work. Like uh, Prometheus and Zeus are like, oh no, headache. Uh, but then it's like, this, it's like the awesome scene from the last episode that we reviewed, but at like seventy five percent quality. Um, yeah. And, uh, but nope, they're like, ah, fooled you. Uh, and there's, I, I love how at, at the eye catch, like over the eye catch, we hear Brooke saying, we'll be back after this. Um, it's, a th- I think Brooke could get away with that. Indeed. Right. Uh, Brooke manages to get through them, uh, as he continues to fight, but then Napoleon turns out Napoleon is also not just a hat, but also a sword. So he, he just completely slashes at, uh, Brooke and, now there's just like too many problems for Brooke to deal with. Now there's fire everywhere. He's getting up. The big, cool, overtaken music is kicking in. Yeah, that was a, that was a blast of the past. Uh, Mom is asking him, why do you get up? Oh, is it for the stone? And uh, I, I just love um, Mommy Koyama's performance in this episode in general. Like oh, really yeah. popped, really, really stood out to me. Um, Brooke is saying, you know, if worse comes to worse and Sanji decided not to return, I don't want him to. Bl- I don't want him to blame himself. I want him to. I want to tell him that there was a great payoff for the mission. And uh, Big Mom is is asking him. Oh, so Sanji not returning is the worst thing that could happen. How how naive can you be? Maybe you'll all die. That that could be the worst case scenario. But Brooke is saying, "What kind of fool regards his own death as part of the plan, young lady?" And he's just being real cool. One of the best yeah. lines. One of my favorite lines of this arc. Actually, a lot of uh, Big Mom's dialogue. Because yeah, I've been mm-hmm. watching a lot of Gundam lately. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, so I've been watching the original series. And uh, she's also the voice of Kishilia Zabi. And it's just a lot of this dialogue she's having with Brooke feels like stuff that that character would also say, you know, when she's like 40 <laughs> years older. Um, we come to the mirror world where uh, Carrot and uh, Chopper are, are, you know, they're tugging uh, – Brulee around with them. They're trying to figure out what mirror will bring them back to Whole Cake Chateau. Carrot's like, you know, threatening to tickle Brulee, but she's having none of it. Uh, they're trying to, they, they learn that you basically have to ask, the mirrors are can talk and you can basically ask the mirrors, uh, you know, where to, how to find your crew. But they, the mirrors don't know what the crew look like. So Carrot is saying, let me handle it. She's got a quill pen. I'm a great artist. I'm excited to see that. But it cuts off there, and we don't see them for the rest of the episodes. Right, I know. Like we're we're still getting to that point. Oh, uh, we're back in prison with Luffy and Nami. Uh, Nami is refusing to give Lola's whereabouts to uh, Charlotte Opera. And Opera's just like, okay, then I'm just going to torture you, and he's like very chill about it. Nami's freaking out. Don't be so chill. Oh. You're skipping over a lot of Luffy trying to tear his own arms apart. I, was fast gross. I wanted to fast forward <laughs> so bad. Well, I mean, it's been like that for like a few episodes. No, so. it doesn't. Oh. It doesn't make it any easier to watch. He's saying, it's okay, Nami. Any, any second now, I'm going to break these arms off. And she's like, I don't want that either. Like, she's <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's being put in a predicament where either she can be tortured by Opera, trying to get the Lola information out of her, or she can let Luffy rip his arms off and fight his way out. And she's like, ah, neither. And, and both of them are calling her a baby. <laughs> or yeah, for freaking out about that. Uh, and this is when Jimbei shows up. We see a very familiar uh, foot wearing a very familiar sandal. And there's a big fish uncle shaped man who has showed up. Uh, I love this. I love this scene. It looks great as uh, Jimbei does the, the 5,000 brick fist punches opera right in the gut. Mm-hmm. The, the, the timing on the, on the punch is like really great. Uh, and that's the end of that episode. Luffy is, uh, you know, he's, he's lighting up. He's like, Jimbei, you're here. And then we can move on to episode 819, uh, Sora's Wish, Jermis Failure Sanji. The title card begins at four minutes and five seconds. Uh, we open with Reiju in this like candy cane hospital room where she's being treated by uh, the, the people of uh, Big Mom's uh, hospital infirm- infirmary. Uh, and uh, as they're sort of like leaving her be, Sanji shows up, kicks one of the chess peacekeeper, chess peacekeepers unconscious so you can sneak into the hospital room and talk to pudding reggie wakes up she's like oh ah my leg is wounded and she's trying to remember what happened and all she can remember is the fake memory that pudding 
put in her head. But Sanji points out that it doesn't feel right, does it? She shouldn't, like, how is putting so confident in her abilities when everyone who's had their memories altered is always like, wait a second, what? <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure if, if Sanji wasn't there to confirm anything, she would have just lived with it. I guess the, the, the Vin Smokes are very strong. They're very, um, you know, they, they've got good DNA, as we find out. Uh, Luffy is still, even even now that Jinbei is here, Luffy's still, like, really into this arm ripping off idea. Uh, he's, he, he keeps bringing it up in the episode, even when he's out of the of the cage uh jimbei he it turns out the the way you get yourself out of uh Montendor's book prison is you light something on fire it burns up the pages burn up they burst out uh nami's clothes are all ripped and she's got like some serious boobage like she's like trying <laughs> trying to cover herself up uh, so. yeah jimbei and luffy are having a conversation and she is fixing her clothes it's just like <laughs> yeah. they couldn't like it, it's so they couldn't be less interested in in, the, in her nudity <laughs> yeah, but uh, the the artists of the episode sure seem to be definitely interested. <laughs> yeah, uh, but she finds a new outfit. She takes some guys' overalls. I really, <laughs> I always like this like puffy pants look on her. Mm. Actually, that um, was an interesting thing. Like when the fire was burning the book, that you see like like in the pages that were on fire, you see them, and then they sort of pop out. But the way that they were just, like shown as like part of a burning book page was pretty cool. The other the other people who popped out there. Yeah. yeah, that was really neat. And Brooke, uh, Jimbei is telling us that the world of books is as big as your imagination. Therefore, it is infinite. Reading uh, is fundamental. Exactly. Uh, Nami is is trying to figure out what's going on with Jimbei and why he's here. And she's saying, uh, didn't you say that at Fishman Island that you had responsibilities you had to take care of? And he's just like, yep. And I just threw them away. Uh, Luffy faints, but he won't admit that he's hungry. Well, I mean, first he says that he's hungry and he's like, wait, no, I can't say that. I'm not hungry. Uh, and then we get some like flashbacks about how Luffy doesn't want to uh, eat something that Sanji hasn't given him. Right. Uh, Luffy, he, he takes this as a moment to go running. He's off to find Sanji. He's getting in fights with all the guards and stuff. Back to Reiju saying that she always thought that something was up with Pudding because she seemed too good to be true. Uh, Sanji's having a real tough time. He's like putting his hands in his head and like, running his fingers through his hair, like his really beautifully detailed hair. Um, Reiju is saying that she wants to let Big Man, Big Mom's plan come to fruition, saying that the Vinsmoke should all die and then Sanji should leave. And she recalls this, uh, a very distinct memory of hers where she remembers her parents getting into a fight. And we go back to the past where I think Reiju is like three years old. I think she's like three years older than the boys. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, basically, Judge is arguing that he wants to uh, gen like genetically enhance the babies before they're born, like while she's pregnant with them. And uh, Sora's like, no, they're my children, too. You don't have a right to do that. Uh, and the whole story is that she, the, I guess some sort of procedure, some sort of vague, undefined procedure happened to her. Mm -hmm. And she's like drinking this toxin to try to undo it. The undefined. Actually, wasn't she supposed to be a scientist as well? Perhaps she devised it. Mm. Yeah, or something like she invented that. Invented it herself. It's a. I mean, I love this whole this whole flashback. It goes to show the connection between Reiju and Sanji specifically, and really shows that their mother is the most interesting person in the family. Yeah, without a <laughs> doubt. Although it was funny in that yeah. first scene when they're talking about "I don't want you to modify the kids," I just kept focusing on the height difference between the two of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I could <laughs> not like stop staring at that. Feet tall. <laughs> I imagine it happens more frequently in this uh, One Piece world because of all the weird heights. Yeah, there's a lot of. Tall oh, yeah, I mean, people. like think about how many normal sized people, how many normal sized husbands, <laughs> right? Their right. mom must have had at, at exactly. some point. Um. Uh, so Sora drank the toxin. It only took on one of the children, Sanji. So Sanji is the only one who grew up, got to grow up as just a normal human. Uh, we see. There, we, there's a variety of moments where we get to see like a nice moment between Reiju and Sora, a nice moment between uh, Sanji and the Sora. The picture on the uh, wall. Judges yeah, the, oh. the, the, mm -hmm. huh? yeah, the, the picture, picture with uh, Sanji and Sora. It's, it's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Judge is just, just a total asshole at Sora's grave. He's like, oh, why are you leaving flowers at your mom's grave? That is weak. Which is, you know, like it's a, it's a little, you know, I, I expected more of Judge, I guess. I didn't. 
I know, it's, it's like really he's he's really pushing yeah. it he's really selling that uh, I'm a, I'm and i love that his voice is the way it is because it's not nearly as low pitched as uh, a lot of other villains would be it makes him seem more sniveling mm. uh we get a moment of you know a child reju crying in her mom's grave uh and then we come back to the present oh no no not, we don't come back to the present because we get a little like we spend a, this this part kind of frustrated me where we spend a good part of the episode just like rewatching like Sanji's escape from mm. from Judge yeah. with like the, the really flashback pretty, of the flashback yeah with like the really pretty Luffy versus Sanji music playing and it's just like <laughs> we have seen stuff from Sanji's backstory repeated so many times at this point. Are you keeping track of how many pages were adapted for that for the second episode? Not for this one. It wasn't a ton. Um, the, they gotcha. really they really drew this one out. This I, I think this middle episode is the weakest of the three here. Um, Which is weird because it has the very strong Sanji. I like. I really like this whole three episodes has made me enjoy the Sanji putting storyline a lot more. So um, we come mm. then we come back to the present and Reiji is talking about how. Uh, our mother protected her child at, at the cost of her own life because the toxin eventually went on to kill her. And that's why you're so much kinder than everybody, Sanji. And she's got like this little tear in her eye. And that's how the episode ends. It's all cheesy. Uh, yeah. We come to episode 820. To reach Sanji, Luffy's vengeful hellbent dash. And the title card is four minutes and five seconds. This episode, there is a lot going on. And th- th- I was I was shocked to, to see that this episode was adapting 12 pages and it felt it feels like, like a lot more. It feels like so it much. Does. Like it the, does. I, the, the, I think um, if this wasn't my longest review on ANN, it's like one of my longest just cause there's just like so much to cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get some fighting between Luffy and the various grunts of big mom's uh, crew. Uh, we get Luffy versus Cadenza. I think is his name. He's like one of opera's brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the Luffy fighting stuff looks pretty good in this episode. Uh, we come back to Reiju and Sanji uh, trying to, she's trying to get Sanji, she's trying to convince Sanji that he has to leave. She's saying, oh, if uh, Big Mom kills, the, you know, our, if, if Big Mom kills us, then we can't threaten your mentor. Uh, and I deserve to die too, because I've been forced to obey my dad's orders and I've killed people and stuff. And I'm like, oh man, yeah, once he's dead, who are you going to obey? Don't be so hard on yourself. Why do you have to die? <laughs> right. He'll be dead first. And then, bam, we get this like this really stylish uh, re-entry into the Pedro versus Baron Tamago fight where I guess for the past three episodes, they've they, the time just stopped for them and we come back right in the middle of, of where we saw them last. It uh, felt where- really abrupt because I forgot that that fight was happening or that we had seen anything from it until yeah. that had happened. I'm like, wait, what? There, there's a stylishness to the abruptness that I, I really liked. Mm. Um, and uh, so the egg yolk falls to the ground after Pedro had cut Baron Tomago in half. And like, we see like this really creepy eye, like show up in the egg yolk as he's like transforming and he becomes, uh, I thought I was health in Helsing uh, for a second. <laughs> is it, it's, it's Viscount? Is that how yeah, you say it? Vi- Viscount. 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 Yeah. Viscount Hyoko, uh, aka Viscount Chick. He's in his chick form. He, he starts as an egg, goes to chick, and then eventually becomes Swinging a chicken. Swinging his chick, I know. Which, with the most menacing pio sound <laughs> I think I've ever heard. Yeah. I, like, I loved the Pedro Tomago mm. fight a few episodes mm. ago, and it just keeps getting better. Like, the sillier it gets, the cooler it gets, where... Like the the music is super dramatic. Like if you went by just like how this fight is presented, you would not think it was any sillier uh, than any other part of the fight. But like he's just, he's a, he's this really adorable chicken man, like dual wielding knives and like going at it. Like it looks mm-hmm. great. The action continues to look great. Mm-hmm. The the way it plays with like kind of rubbery physics and smears and stuff is great. Uh, just like Hyoko with the knives is just one of the funniest looking things I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, definitely. And I love that it's taking place in such a colorful part of the castle too. I mean, the whole island is obviously very colorful, but compared to some of the fights with Luffy, you know, in the gray corridors, just having this outrageous fight in this brightly colored, uh, you know, courtyard, I think really adds to it because it's just so colorful. And the, uh, with the last Jedi mm-hmm. homage that I posted on Twitter, <laughs> the, the bright red, that's later on, isn't it? Uh-huh. My bad. 
Yeah, no, I think that was that, that was how they reopened the, right, the right. scene. Uh, cross cut with this is Brooke and Big Mom continuing to fight. Yeah, his fight ends with him like piercing Big Mom right in the heart. But then we don't get to find out what happens right away. And we come back to Pedro versus Hyoko again. Uh, just like the action just keeps ramping up, getting better and better. Uh, he cuts Kyoko again. And then his, his men are like, oh, he's he's going to become Count Niwatori. And uh, Pedro's, Pedro's just like, screw this. And he's like walking over stab, with his sword. Yeah. Right? To just uh, stab him mid-transformation. Uh, but then all of uh, all of the guards, all of the, the goons are, are going at him and forcing Pedro to pull up the dynamite. Uh, and the dynamite explodes, and we see we see a shadow of uh, of Count Niwatori, like kind of cl- flying away from the explosion, going cock a doodle doo. Uh, come back to Brook again. His sword can't seem to pierce Big Mom's skin. It's her. She's she's you know in that sort of Kaido school of toughness, where you're just so strong that you can't be cut by by blades and stuff. Um, he does manage to give uh, Prometheus a little nick on his cheek. But uh, it just kind of reforms again because he's a son. We get a little scene of uh, Smoothie and like one of the the people who work for Big Mom. And she's she's basically telling him, hey, if it means not making Big Mom mad, it's OK if we don't tell her everything. It's basically the, the gist of that scene. Uh, so the as, as strong as this crew is, the thing that they feared the most is is failure and, and making mom unhappy. Uh, we come back again to Big Mom and Brooke. Their fight is basically over. She, I, the part of this fight, I like that we finally got to the part where Big Mom is just like very gently like slapping Brooke across across the room and whatnot. Uh, but the, he he loses the fight, and now she's he's her pet. And he's been like stripped down. Like, do you think that's just like the underwear that he wears, or do you think that that's what she dressed him up in? It's hard to say. The little like striped swimsuit looking thing. And why didn't they check the underwear for that matter? If they were checking everything, including his, his cane, you know? <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And, and so, yeah, they're, they're, you know, going through his stuff, going through his clothes, going through the little tube that he had. They find nothing. He had not gotten any sort of poneglyph rubbing there in the clear as far as uh, Brooke goes. And uh, Brooke is basically just being humiliated. <laughs> you know, Big Mom's just like petting his ass. I like when she's rubbing him against it, her face. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, and she's also t- telling Brooke that, like, the reason why Prometheus and Zeus and Napoleon are especially strong is because they have uh, pieces of her own soul. So they're, they're unlike normal homies in that way. Uh, Pudding shows up and we get some exposition about how uh, Roger, Gold Roger, once broke into uh, Big Mom's territory and was able to read the Poneglyph by listening to the quote unquote voice of all things. And uh, she's counting on Pudding to one day be able to do something similar and to be able to read the Poneglyph because something about the tribe of three-eyed people is known to do that. But Pudding he's is only like, a hat. Mm. And they actually use a relatively offensive Japanese word for it, too. They use, they use the word hafu, which was surprising. I, mean, like, I thought that was supposed to be offensive, but yeah. I mean, maybe, oh, I maybe, maybe, maybe it is. Well, it referred to, a mixed, to refer to a mixed-race person. It's an offensive word in, in Japan to say that, and that... Big Mom would say that about her own daughter is surprising. And on a children's television show. Yeah. Uh, we don't know if, you know, putting being half human, half triclops. Um, we don't know if that means that she ha- she will have the same power to read porn glyphs. Um, mm. I, my, my guess is that that's got to, you know, happen at some point. But, um. But there, there's definitely the sense of like Big Mom's putting a lot of pressure on her daughter, and uh, Pudding doesn't seem too happy about this. Even after, even at this point, when you know Pudding's been revealed to be evil, there still seems to be like a rift between her and her mother. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is also the pudding, part that where I saw the place between mm-hmm, Sanji and, mm-hmm. and Pudding, the expectations that were put on them. Yeah, <laughs> and Big Mom's like practically twisting Brooke's head off, like he's a he's like a Barbie doll. Um, and Pudding is like, she recognizes Brooke and she's like, oh, okay, so I can't talk too much in front of him. So she asks, she puts on her her baby doll eyes and asks mom if they can talk in private in her room. Uh, and then we come to, back to Reiju and Sanji. They've been just sat in this hospital room for like two episodes straight now. And she 
tells Sanji that the bomb cuffs on his wrists are actually fake, that she swapped them out at some point, that he was never really in any danger. Uh, and uh, Sanji is real surprised by this. Now now he basically has no reason not to just walk away. Uh, if he wants to go reunite with Luffy, there's very little stopping him. Uh, and uh, Riju is saying, you know, she, she's like, go go to your friends. You, you'll, you'll never make... You'll never meet such great friends like them twice, is what she says. And that's how the episode wraps up. Mm-hmm. Any general thoughts on these three episodes, you guys? Oh, well, I mean, I got my opinions out on the pudding uh, Sanji stuff. But uh, uh, I, I liked what we saw of Brooke and Pedro and Chopper uh, and Carrot still get to do basically nothing except for the one one good joke. They got one good joke in three episodes. It's a shame. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. like, I like that right. we're not we're not just cutting to them before you know their actual important plot points show that's up. true i mean i guess it, i mean it would be worse but like they, they don't have much to do yeah right. i mean i think overall the animation quality still been pretty decent i mean there's been stronger episodes but i think you know if you look at the three the quality's been pretty good um i do think the middle one was probably the weaker of the two of the three rather but that's primarily because it's a flashback of a flashback but um I think the fight scenes with Brooke and Mama were done really, really well. It's, it's, it's nice to see Brooke shining as much as he's been doing in this arc and having some stylish fights in there. I really enjoyed watching those. Yeah. Um, I thought, I mean, I thought that we dragged Brooke versus big mom out a little too much since I kind of like that. It's, it's, it was a pretty mm-hmm. de- decisive win for big mom. So it's just like, we're kind of playing around up until mm-hmm. that point. Um, I love Pedro versus Tamago slash Hyoko slash Niotori like a lot. Um, really just like that. The third of these three episodes, I was really amazed at how, how they could cover so little manga material, but still make it full of variety and uh, stuff that moves the story forward effectively. Like, you know, like Sanji is, is in a completely different position. Now Luffy's in a completely different position. Now Brooks in a completely different position now, you know, yeah. Uh, so we're moving the story forward, and I think that the little nuggets of like, uh, just like seeing how, the, the, seeing how this this family relates to each other, and how they may not be, you know, totally working together in the most effective way possible. I think we're we're seeing that pretty effectively right now. It, it's subtle right now, the way the way it's supposed to be, but it's uh, really really working for me in in that sense. How do you guys, just in general, how do you guys feel about the moment when? Uh, we, we learned that Sanji's cuffs were fake this whole time. After all the stuff between Reiju and, and Sanji, it, it kind of made sense. They set it up. It made sense. It definitely wasn't what I expected when I was reading the manga, for sure. But, I mean, I think yeah. so many other things happened between then. It sort of didn't become as big of a plot point as it was, you know, when you originally read it. So I thought the way it was was handled was was pretty well done. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I think that should do it. Thank you guys for coming. I think sure. we're ready to move on to the next segment. All right. Then. Thanks. This is the Piece Together segment where we take your questions, comments, and theories. Uh, let's start out with everyone's favorite segment. Ed, what is it? This Pete? Oh, wait. I forgot it's been a couple of weeks and like, <laughs> no i almost went to i thought you were prompting me to do my no segment. not yet that's a little early uh, i was uh, i was getting all amped up and then i remembered oh wait yeah you could join us uh on discord all you have to do is become a patreon subscriber patreon.com slash one piece podcast send us a screen cap of your subscription and you're welcome I, the, the people on uh our discord will Help you out and give you an account. I don't know how it works. I am not of this generation. Um, I am, but I'm <laughs> not. Uh, let's start out with Hyperbola Bully, uh, who said, what was your favorite One Piece chapter or moment of 2017? Now, I know we all prepared studiously for this question. <laughs> so let's go one by one. I'm going to put the person I know does not have an answer on the spot first, Steve. Perfect. One more time. Uh, you're... <laughs> favorite chapter or moment from 2017? Uh, man. <laughs> no, because I, I, I think I'm not the first person that's said this on the show, but I don't I, I, I don't 
remember chapters after a while. Like I, I think I remember moments more. Um, you also I weren't think on the Curry show room. quite as much uh, this year. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, maybe the uh, the cut of Curry reveal was really good, but no, we had the whole wedding cake toppling last year. I think, to be honest, I, I think, think the whole wedding the wedding is mine. I mean, the honestly, wedding was great. Uh, whatever chapter ended with Brooke in the Luffy disguise breaking the the portrait of uh, Mother uh, Carmel. Oh my god! I yeah. think yeah. that. That chapter really stuck with me at the time. So I want to mm-hmm. say, I, I do want to say that one. And you know what? The, uh, and of course, I don't remember the numbers. I'm sorry, but Pound's uh, chapter of glory. I really enjoyed that one too. Cause I think I was on, no, I wasn't on for that manga recap. I was on the previous one because that was the one with oven. Uh, and I, I enjoy doing the voice of oven, but I think, yeah, Pounds kind of uh, ambiguous uh, chapter of you know his fate and uh, the the breaking of the portrait of Mother Carmel. Those were great chapters. Uh, episode? Did they ask for episode? Uh, no, just chapter or moment. I mean, if you want to add an episode, you can. Best episode of the year was the whole Pedro and Tomago episode. Was that? Oh, from like a one? month ago. Yeah. Yeah, with Pedro's flashback. Bet I think that's one of the best episodes they've done in the last I think since we've been doing this podcast wow uh, I should catch up <laughs> um, Ed I just think the whole wedding I'm a lot like Steve I remember the, the moments I don't remember what, necessarily remember the chapters but I remember the introduction of the underworld figures being such an expansion that, of the world I, I enjoyed can, that chapter so you, much even if it wasn't so plot it wasn't so much the plot, but like these characters expand the world, and I just love that they there that, that they're, they are. Uh, there. Can you be more specific about underworld characters that may have been the best moment of the year? Because you're so close to the right answer. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> of course it's big news. Yes, big news organs was obviously the best big moment news. of 2017. Any other answer you have <laughs> is wrong. Uh, Jeff Abelardo. <laughs> Oh, uh, I think I'm trying. I was trying to place if this was actually in the year, and I but I couldn't quickly look this up. But um, the I think it's the the planning before the wedding of like everyone uh, gathered around, and the fact that there was like the the two different over, over the course of two different chapters, the like view of when everyone's sitting around the table planning with um, beige, and there's this there's a stuff with um, Gastino. There's the stuff with the, the looking at the table from two different perspectives over two different chapters, and um, and also uh, Luffy having the um, fedora over his straw hat, or vice versa, whichever way it was. All uh, that stuff, Steve. Which I think Steven. it's here. I don't know. Yeah, I would definitely agree that the um, the sequence in uh, Bedge's uh, hideout or castle, or wherever that was taking place when they were doing the planning stuff, was some of the most entertaining. Um, things of this year, but I don't know if I had to pick a moment, I think I would just th- have three words that would describe the best moment of the year. And that is weird screaming giraffe. <laughs> oh my God. I yes. forgot about that. <laughs> Good answer. Um, Again, but that is also at the wedding. So that, that is encompassed in my, you did say weird. <laughs> oh, so you're going to, you're going to take credit for that. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I take credit for, I re- that's the, the, the clip of my own voice that I've listened to the most from the podcast. This <laughs> Wait, can you be more specific? <laughs> weird screaming giraffe. <laughs> when I said it, yes. the episode. if you ever have the time to cut that, I'm just going to randomly put that in episodes. Um, <laughs> send that over. Ed. Um, That'll be our, our crab apples. Yeah, exactly. so. <laughs> um, everyone got a chance to respond to that, right? Um, the next question is from Bat Bat Martin, uh, who has a picture, a screen cap from the uh, when Jinbei reunites with uh, Luffy in the in the in the book room, and said the world. This of is books, an audio podcast. It says though, there's subtitles. <laughs> the world of books is as big as your imagination, which means it's infinite. And his. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I noticed that. And Bat, Bat Martin said Jimbei would make a fantastic spokesperson for Scholastic or some other children's book company. What One Piece character would you like to see given <laughs> the ridiculous job as spokespeople for real world brands or companies? For example, no, 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 no. That's the, that's the that's the least important question. So what I want is Lavar Burton as Jimbei in the live. Yes. Action. Also, well, oh god, okay, that's a different question. I, I have the, the thought of. 
Oh. Ed's not. No, 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 no. Forget, forget the actual question. Uh, I want Reading Rainbow hosted by Jim Bay. No. <laughs> uh, oh. Matt Martin continues in saying, for example, Caesar is the spokesperson for Little Caesars or Pound taking Mott's marketing to Pound Town over their apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> um wait so 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 that text you were talking about is in english in the anime yeah no no, no it's the Sometimes subtitles in the, yeah. oh okay i believe All that right. is from the crunchy roll i don't see the i don't see the specific mm. thing. it is from crunchy roll. Like just, wait. i'm sorry to cut you off zach uh before no, when you're describing the photo because uh just that whole that line of dialogue i the first image that popped in my head was uh uh, if you remember that uh, journey into the world of imagination ride in Epcot and Disney World, uh, the guy that hosts it, forget his name, uh, but I just immediately imagined Jimbe as that guy. This purple top hat with Figment, the the dragon. Uh, someone out there is getting this. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, actually, the, the guy who created Figment did an interview with the Defunct Land podcast. Oh, cool. And, uh, he's a really interesting, he's a really interesting dude. Check I, that, I, I got that podcast. I like, I like Defunct Land. I've seen those videos, so maybe I'll check out that podcast. Oh, but yeah, he does a, a, a podcast with interviews, and he interviewed the guy who uh, created Figment. That's great. Um, uh, was, we got to think of some uh, brands. Uh, we got to think, Do we, we got to think of what One Piece characters are going to sell out. Um, oh, uh, b- b- Count Niwatori Chicken. Fried chicken. <laughs> no, that's no, Is that's that like weird? Bojack. Why would you want to support that? It's a, it's a species trigger. For anyone who's seen Bojack Horseman, I think isn't the same. Doesn't the same thing happen where it's a chicken spokesman for a chicken company and they address how weird that is? Um, it's a good show. <laughs> he he uh, he reps Five Guys. There. Oh, so it's like uh, what is it? The, the yeah. Chick Fil A. Oh, yeah. Chick Fil A. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, well, the re- God. Yeah, that's just it's the reverse of that, right? It's. <laughs> So it's reverse Chick Fil A, um, right? Any others, guys? There's so much potential here. We big, are not big news. Doing Morgan's damn thing. either the National Enquirer or New York Post. Um, <laughs> seem like that's the two. Um, uh, he no, wait. I, I wonder. Oh my God, is he named after uh, Piers Morgan? No. What? Uh, no. I hope not. I hope nothing is named after Piers Morgan. <laughs> I mean, he's fake news. Like, he's the bone guy. Like, okay. well, I mean, Piers Morgan uh, would be a uh, tool of a certain administration, just a different one than the one Big Mo- News Morgan's right. is a tool of. <laughs> that's my head cannon, and you can't convince me otherwise. Sorry, maybe uh, Kizaru can uh, be the spokesperson for Motel Six because he'll leave the light on for you. Uh, okay. We're done. <laughs> We're not gonna beat that one. Uh, let's go to emails. Uh, first one comes from Ogbemi, who said, "Hey, One Piece podcast, big boys and girls." Uh oh, Fire Crouch was back on our Patreon episode, by the way. Uh, so if you have not listened to that, it's at patreoncom slash podcast. Still available, along with I think around like four hours of extra material. Anyway, congrats on 500 episodes from a listener since 2009. Thank you. Uh, Did anyone else love the detail on Big Mom in this chapter? Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this the first time we've seen her veins when she uses her strength on page eight? I don't have that specific in front of me. Uh, Also, now that Prometheus and Napoleon have the same swirly eyes as Mama, hey, we pointed that out. uh, Does this mean that they also are in the hunger pang mode and less efficient? Their eyes were normal when she was on the slug during her first hunger pang. They were also just like chatting with each other in the middle of the ocean. uh, In a few chapters ago. (laughs) Yeah, what do you guys think of that? Hmm. I don't know. She's also got more, like she's more logical now. So like, I don't think it's entirely like there. There's one mode. There's one level of intelligence. Yeah. I think she's intelligent. She's just she's overcome with the need to eat. Well, I mean, she was, yeah, maybe intelligence, right? Where, but consciousness, That's awareness, because mm-hmm. definitely the earlier stuff seemed a lot more like the flashback stuff where she was just not, aware it's like she has some sort of dementia she's kind of there but not completely um she could only focus on food um anyway uh, any other question any other thoughts on that okay next one comes from ryan who said since food homies exist on whole cake island it had me thinking 
Could the movie Sausage Party, starring Seth Rogen, be based on homies that escape from Whole Cake <laughs> Island during the chaos that's happening right now? Also, what item, food, etc., would make the worst homie? He would pick wow. toilet paper. Wow, what a what a, what a terrible <laughs> first endeavor for a One Piece spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, right off the bat, they, the they, they messed it up. Uh, yeah, any uh, thoughts? What would be the worst homie? Uh, I thought toilet paper was a pretty good that's, choice. Yeah. Well, that's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, we could go the you know the the adult route. You know, some things you might find in uh, a store that caters to okay, adults. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> that might be an invasion of privacy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> let's just say you have a certain okay, item, that's... and they're just like, "Say, what are we doing today?" Um, that would be the voice. I don't, I don't think people. I, I don't think people. Yeah, uh, that's what you want for. Uh, I don't know. I... You want the batteries on or off? I, say, Look, I, I, I don't know if I'm you done. can see. I'm trying I don't know. to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, I think I would. If, if they were talking like that, I would just throw it out. <laughs> that's not. It's anti sexy times. Uh, then, it tur- then it turns into child's play. It just keeps coming back. You have to shoot it in the okay, heart. Here we go. Uh, any oh, other the switch was set to evil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> um, any other? Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, let's move on, please. Uh, it- <laughs> I got that out. Andy of my Yoho, uh, friend of the show, said, "For this year's closing music of the podcast, are we finally at that opening? The opening that Greg? I, I don't know what you're talking open- about. I have no. You don't idea know what I'm talking, talking about. about. You don't know what I'm talking about. What? Okay. Oh dear. My ears, the squirrels, Zach. The squirrels. You actually mentioned that, uh, Andy, and this the being effed by squirrels. Uh, are we going to be subjected to that for an entire year? <laughs> Think of the children. <laughs> Kidding. Hope you had a great morning. It's actually a better song than several of the themes they've used since the time skip. Oh, wow. Look, 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 look forward to that. season Just twenty-three of the Wicked <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But I've grown to um, I've grown to appreciate the song when it comes on random in my iPod. <laughs> but as long as it's not in the the power I wield now is dangerous. <laughs> Zach, uh, Zach's awakened uh, podcast host now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is this is my awakened devil fruit right here. Yeah, he has new abilities. Oh my god. Zach, so that's how lame Zach is. His awakened devil fruit is a soundboard. Well, if my, if my abilities were to pick out English voice actors, I can only imagine how lamer it could get from there. You could pick I, guess, I could see their headshots in the corner of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they already do that on uh, on Amazon Prime Video where they have the credits like um, right? Yeah, that, I don't know. that's going to do <laughs> it. Uh, Stephen, take us to Reddit. All right. Uh, we'll go with uh, – I'm going to take two comments from John Garja here who leads off with uh, some, some comments on the cover page. Why would they make Big Mom the pig rather than Zombie Lola? Uh, why is Marco the rooster rather than Bartolomeo? And why is What's Her Dick the rat instead of, I don't know, Nizumi or something? It just seems like some odd choices were made. Um, well, they chose to use characters that are important. Uh, yeah, I, I think in, in each of those cases, the ones that he went with are, is cooler than the one that was suggested. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think anyone's clamoring to see uh, Nesumi, Nesumi included in a color spread again. Yeah, he's so he's lucky of, he so made it. In, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, he's lucky he made it in the film Z color spread. He should be lucky. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even. I forgot he was. Characters have a chance yeah. of reappearing. Yeah. Uh, what's next? Uh, also from John Garja, it points out obviously that skeleton wasn't Nami's. It had ribs. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Fierce Alchemist uh, wants to know what do you think Frankie's reaction will be when he sees this the damaged Sunny. I think he just sort of gets to work like when he built that bridge on Thriller Bark, he's just like he fixes it in a day. Steve. Uh, uh what is he? Oh doing? no, my boat. 
<laughs> this is the most understated Frankie reaction. Oh no, somebody touching my sonny. Oh, somebody <laughs> touching my sonny. <laughs> okay. Uh what's next, Steven? All right. Uh Ulairi wants <laughs> Yeah, Ulairi 23 uh wants to know what should the Charlotte family's New Year's resolutions be, uh, either collective or individual? Die. <laughs> That's positive. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, Para Sparrow yeah, positive be, for the world. Para Sparrow would be to never tell a lie again. <laughs> no, Para Sparrow would be. No, it's actually funny. Para Sparrow that comes up in the anime too. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe also Para Sparrow can make a resolution on uh, riding left-handed. Uh, wow, <laughs> that's that's a low, that's a low blow there, Steve. But I think let's, um, uh, let's, Daifuku's going to try Steven, not to ahead. rub himself so much. Yeah. <laughs> I was basically going to say the same thing. So good on you, Stephen. Uh, God, who are these mm. other freak kids? Um, uh, maybe uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, the Wurzel Gomage looking one. Uh, Magical World of Reading. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Montor. 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 Yeah. Maybe uh, invest in uh, an Amazon Kindle or a tablet. <laughs> Save some shelf space. Save an animal. Non flammable. <laughs> uh, uh, Ed, who was that random uh, uh, Charlotte daughter that was in the anime? That was. Oh, um, Mukuru? Uh, maybe her resolution uh, can uh, be having a point or having a character. <laughs> I mean, you get introduced but... in the manga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, SBS for you. Uh, and was it uh, uh, opera? Opera could definitely learn how to just tell the truth, be honest, <laughs> yeah. ask yeah. for opinions more. Um, Stephen, no, that's all. Anybody else oh. have any other suggestions? All right. Well, I guess uh, yeah, I think we can move on. We'll move on. Um, so we got a, a bunch of uh, very nice comments uh, congratulating us on 500 episodes. I'll pick one to read here from Van Man 51, who said, I have no question today. I'd just like to give a huge thank you to everyone who helped make the 500th episode happen. I had a five hour car trip alone over the holidays and I hate car trips, but the podcast made it actually enjoyable the whole way. I really enjoyed hearing from past contributors and learning a little bit about the industry and how the podcast has evolved. Involved. So again, a big thank you and all the appreciation in the world for what you all do. And as always, keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah, thank That's you awesome. I, yeah, I, I really appreciate everyone who reached out on Twitter and everywhere else to congratulate us. Um, it's kind of surreal that it has been over 500 episodes now. I, uh, I felt a little uh, like self-conscious, I guess, because I, I I don't like to think of us being like sort of celebrating ourselves, even though, you know, we, we do that. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, I, so I'm glad to hear that there were people who actually enjoyed us just sort of talking about ourselves for the most part and uh, a little bit about One Piece as well. Um, so we try and mostly talk about ourselves on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have to say it also it also felt very felt very One Piece to like have all these people from the past come back come back into play and we're again. all gonna fight one enemy and, yeah. um <laughs> i'm not gonna say but you you guys out there can forget and if i can suggest uh, those uh you don't like those car trips uh that's a shame because uh i do uh even if it's driving alone but yeah best thing you know best remedy to make those car trips uh better or you know of course music podcasts and stand-up comedy or an audiobook you got, you got to invest what in this. What he means to say is the One Piece podcast. That's what's And the One Piece about. podcast offers all of those. <laughs> there's the, re- there's, there's the, the manga recaps. Those are kind of like an audio book. Uh, music, we have those Christmas specials you shouldn't listen to anymore. Uh, <laughs> Stand up comedy. Aren't, haven't you been laughing at this Wait, episode? No. <laughs> no, Steve, we have music. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, we'll go to Part Hunter D, who says the anime this week really deserves some credit for adding in some definition to putting in Big Mom's relationship. In the, mon- in the manga, the first time we see any kind of verbal abuse on Mom's part is in the short flashback during the wedding. To me, that whole reveal and Pudding's reaction to Sanji just seemed to come out of nowhere at the time. So to see them working toward a setup in that regard was really refreshing. Also, I really hope Pudding sticks around for a good while longer, if only because it means we keep getting cool Sanji moments for her to fawn over. Yeah, and I pointed that out a lot during the anime nice. recap because I think it really it really pounds home how similar of a childhood Sanji and Pudding had, or at least how their families feel. Someone say pound, bro. Like, you didn't ever... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I like the comment anyway. that um, you know having pudding there seems to be seems to like somehow automatically draw out uh, dramatic Sanji moments like where he's acting really cool and not like the butt of a joke. So uh, I, I, I do appreciate it in that sense. It's, it's like as it's like when uh, oh go ahead. It's Zach. like as if Steve were in the room right there. Mm-hmm. Oh what? <laughs> Or it's like, um, it's, does anyone watch Parks and Recreation when Leslie goes to visit Jerry at home and he actually mm-hmm. is yes. co- coordinated yeah. and cool? <laughs> he catches a, a, a mug before it hits the ground like, oh my god, you normally spill everything all over yourself. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we'll take the last question here from Reddit. It'll be from our very own Chow, who says, as you guys know, 2018 is the year of the dog. If One Piece characters were to be dogs, what breed would they be? Um, <laughs> I like this question a lot. Yeah. Um, this is also directly from Parks and Recreation. Oh God, it is. <laughs> this question. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. From, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. I mean, the, the Straw Hats, right? Mm-hmm. So Luffy would obviously be some sort of retriever, um, yeah. because he's boundless energy or a boxer. Um, yeah. Boxer? Nah. I. I can't What's see. I can't see thing? Luffy being a boxer. Um. I think uh, I think Zoro would be some sort of like a Rottweiler or something. Yeah, Zoro would be. Uh, that's that's like perfect dark dog, yeah. sort of. Um, I feel like Brooke Brooke's would, a great Dane, or or a Greyhound <laughs> maybe, depending on like because the, the the Afro, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, a poodle. A Wait, hound. yes, um, <laughs> Brooke, could Brooke be would be a poodle. They, a very large poodle. Yeah, yeah, a giant, giant poodle. poodle. <laughs> please, I, if anyone isn't has there these dogs, can they please dress them up as these characters for Halloween? <laughs> oh man! Yeah. By the way, it was totally that uh, that cover page. Uh, not not a cover story, but just the cover art of Brooke uh, uh, as a dog walker, and he was walking oh, a bunch yeah. of funky dogs. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, Frankie would be a Saint Bernard. I just think of That's, the barrel right. of liquor that Saint oh, Bernard yeah. to yeah. carry, and that just has cola. <laughs> that is cola. Oh my! Can uh, someone draw these. That's so cool. It's like to. Uh, Na- Nami would be a, a Pomeranian. <laughs> Yappy little. <laughs> what would Robin be? Robin would have to be like a quiet, you know, to themselves. Robin's a so. cat. Robin, Robin is a cat. Let's be fair. <laughs> yeah, if, no, if Robin, Robin is a cat, cat, then she'd be like an What's Afghan the most or something. What's uh, the most cat like dog? Like, I'm trying to think or, uh, to themselves. A Saluki, kind of, which is kind of like a long haired greyhound, good temperament. And also, it's Egyptian uh, as well. So. I think uh, Chopper. Asta, you know. Anyway, go. Oh, I know, but it's associated. Yeah. Chopper is what? Chopper. Would, oh, what about Sanji? Probably be, uh, Chopper, it's I'd like Chopper. to think maybe uh, just a t- definitely a tiny dog. Maybe corgi. one of those tiny. Corgi. The chopper yeah, would be a corgi. corgi. In in big form, he would be like a Malamute or something. Like one of the talking dogs. Oh, I love those. Yeah, I love Malamute. Big husky. I, anything cuddly and, and super furry. Yeah. Well, what about Sanji? I think Sanji's the one we haven't got. Uh, Sanji, mm. something spunky. What 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 dogs ha- only cover their eye like cover their <laughs> eye on one side? That one dog from Lady and the Tramp. Um, <laughs> I, I have a dog breed book in the other room that I really should be looking for. You know, I'm gonna go to the. You guys go to the next question. I'll find that out. And I'll well, we didn't say Usopp I'm either. Like. That's right. Um, Usopp, I could also see as a greyhound. Just shaking quivering in fear all the time <laughs> um, guys what kind of dog would you be uh, a french bulldog really yes yes <laughs> yeah that or a bulldog either bulldog yeah yeah one of those i've got my dog breed book so maybe i can find <laughs> um, some good ones too uh, we're thinking about this way too much 
But no, we we, we should. There's it's, no, it's there's the no the dogs. This is this is the first time in twelve years that we've gotten to to imagine yep. the characters as dogs. Um, <laughs> uh, oh man! Oh my god! Can you imagine? What's a really? Can you imagine a French bulldog sounding like Jimbe? <laughs> <laughs> What's a really ugly character in in One Piece? Wapple. Guys, I'm looking at a picture of a standard poodle that literally yeah. has an afro that looks just <laughs> like Book. It's great. He's that's definitely what he is. I'm gonna say Steli is one of those um, like ha- hairless terriers, like <laughs> Sam the Ugly Dog. The uh, yeah, yeah, let's get to Steli. Yeah. What about where, uh, Sanji as a Dalmatian? I hear they're kind of a pain in the ass. Well, and also they're they're extremely mm. um their their breeding is a major issue. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's perfect. Just like Sanji. Um, Not to be confused with the character down there. <laughs> of course. I don't know why I found that so funny. Because it's uh, nerdy as hell. Steven. No, that was, <laughs> yeah, uh, that was the end of Reddit, right? What about Strawberry? Yeah, that, that'll which, be it for Reddit. Which one is he? Um, Ed, it's time to... Peace the tweet, Nice. I hope that was cl- crystal clear for everyone. Um, what what do we have on Twitter? Uh, very own Brian Newton starts off, starts us off saying, "In my head, Baron Tomago is the father to Smoothie and Katakuri." I don't know why, but I can't think of a reason for that. But yeah, I don't get that. Okay. Uh, Andrew Peterson asks: Archetypically speaking, is Luffy more of a hero or an anti-hero, or both? Maybe neither. Chaotic good. And again, we already know Luffy doesn't consider himself a hero, so maybe it's a moot point. Thoughts? I think Garp is an old English sheepdog. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the thought I was asking. <laughs> I'm still going through this book. I'm sorry. This is going to be the rest of my night. You have ruined my night. Who asked that question? <laughs> Come yes, ciao. Thank you, ciao. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next one. Go for I don't, it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Kirkitaku says, does it really matter if Nami ends up keeping Zeus? Mama could easily create another cloud homie like she did with the sea slug. Plus, Nami gets a huge power. It's part of Mama's soul. Like, I don't think it can function that far away from her, right? All I um, know is that's a good there's question. no substitute for Zeus. You can't replace a treasured pet. Yeah. So they're they're gonna like they're just gonna yeah. use him until the end of the arc, and then. I, I mean, presumably there are homies all over Toto Land, so yeah. I, I don't see why it couldn't be remote. But I, I'm sure there's some kind of like power differential or something. If he's C- can't um, can't Big Mom bring the soul back out of Zeus? Yeah. I mean, I know we I know she probably could with regular it's homies. Part of her but own soul. Why can't she put her back in her own body? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's like something with the devil. Who the hell knows? <laughs> It's a made up home. And one thing we really haven't seen at all, right, is um her like making a homie in the middle of an action sequence. Mm. Right. Mm. Like I wonder with that being like with uh Prometheus being her last way of getting around, maybe if they'll beat Prometheus, that'll be how she dramatically makes another Zeus or something. Mm. Who knows? Okay. Next mm. one comes from Frank Full Metal. It says, So far we've seen people use armament hockey to harden their skin. Do you think it's possible for Brook to use armament hockey to harden his bones, increase his bone density? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's strong enough or powerful enough to use that kind of hockey. It might not be his forte, but there's no there's no uh, you know magic reason why he shouldn't be able to do it. I'd say smoker is a Siberian husky. <laughs> <laughs> Next one comes from Sniper <laughs> of My Heart. It says, The crew working together to fight Big Mom reminds me of the crew versus Oars. Pirate talking 2.0 when? Cool. Um, yeah. Zach's got dogs yeah, on the that's brain. That's all I got. It's so. not unusual. What's your excuse? Go ahead. Yeah. Next one comes from Sis16. It says, I would pay good money for a plush of the Zeus that was in the last few panels, wouldn't we all? Um, Next one comes from Dr. Ajidoku, who says, Was it a bad choice for Oda to have Big Mom get on the ship so soon? Because although the combos, to re- the combos to remove her from the ship were cool to see, it makes her threat level go down as an emperor. What are your opinions on the matter? I don't think her threat level went down just because they were able to like, like get her off briefly. God, don't say it like that. 
your mind out of the gutter today, Ed. <laughs> hey, yeah, you, you, you need those homey infused devices to, for the. Oh, <laughs> sorry, that, that's sorry. That's what just, for. Just, I'm trying to be a clean I mean, podcast. Comedy has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> oh, no, I don't. I think Big Mom is no. still a threat because yeah, they knocked her off the ship for a brief moment, but at the end of this chapter, Jim, she's in like, Jimbe. Yeah. Yeah, like she messed up. Like Jimbei, as I said, was one of the strongest characters in the series when he was when he was introduced. He was a warlord. He's one of the most strongest power, strongest pirates in the world. Mm-hmm. So it makes I think it makes sense that they were able to do that much. I'm sure. You know, Sanji, I think, is a Spanish water dog, and that's because the eyes are covered. I think it, it, he kind of just looks like this dog. Is what I'm trying to say. Zach, I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Steve. <laughs> What's next, then? <laughs> Um, oh, we had another question about Zeus from Met Wars, uh, but it's the same question. Next, uh, last one comes from Stacy Chen, who says, perhaps it's because I'm hungry, but if you could be a minister of any sweets or other food-related items, what would you want to be? Mm-hmm. You'd have infinite supply to said food. Now, this is a question that takes my mind off of dogs for a second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Think like a dog. Um, I mean, does it have to rhyme with your name? Is, I guess, the biggest question. No, no, um, no, no. Um, I'm Any- I'm either the minister of pizza or um, I guess I'd have to just be that. I mean, I'm a New Yorker. I think I have an obligation here. Um, of I don't know, maybe like a hamburger, probably. Well, we're really <laughs> representing the United States here as best we could. You must say. I'd go for cheese, I guess. Yeah, that's that's a good choice. I guess I would be in your town, Jeff. I'd be like a mayor. You'd be the minister of cheese. I'd be the mayor of pizza. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, anyone else? That's our last piece of the tweet. Okay. Um, yeah, please keep sending your piece together. We'll go through how in a moment. Um, yeah, I think that's going to do it. Let's round off. catch a jolt from my they did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. They did the mash. It caught on in a flash. They did the mash. This has been. Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let's do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfair that only Zach has access to that. <laughs> Does he, though? <laughs> Yes, yes oh. I do. <laughs> this has it, been the One Piece Podcast, episode 501 for the week of Monday, January 8th, 2018. Uh, Steven had to take off. I want to give him a huge thanks for coming on the show. Check him out at Translatosaurus. He has lots of cool, amazing stuff coming out. And I, how am I going to listen to this song every week? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, check him out. Lots of cool stuff there. Uh, please, if you haven't, subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast. I can't take this song. <laughs> See, now we can all hear the ending song, so it's especially terrible. Okay, uh, so <laughs> we're going to let Ed keep singing later. Uh, before well, hold on, we guys, end, we're going to do this part. Woo! 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 Yeah! You don't want to see what I you don't want to see what I just did. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> if only Alex were here. Yeah, I've lost control of this show. So, uh, Jeff, where could the good people out there contact you? I am definitely Jeff on Twitter, and uh, read Shonen Jump through the official apps on Android and iOS, and let me know on Twitter if you have suggestions or things you want to see improved or whatever. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Steve, where could people find you? Uh, Well, you could find me on Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. I'm so distracted by this song. Uh, <laughs> here comes the username. I just want to say thank you to all of those that were at MAGFest and came by my table. I know there were some podcast fans there. Uh, you guys are great. You guys are very sweet. I'm going to be doing Katsukon. Yeah! <laughs> I'm going to be doing Katsukon in the same exact place next month, so hopefully I'll see you there. Um, and I'll also be at Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle in March. So, for that. And oh, cool. oh my god. Uh, yes. I could start hyping this. Uh, Hot Streets is yeah. a series, uh, an animated series that's going to be on Adult Swim. I was a storyboard artist on the pilot, and I was a storyboard artist on season one 
We're premiering on January 14th at midnight on Adult Swim. Please watch. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd All love to hear it. Better. Unless they're just crappy Facebook negative comments, you could fuck off. Uh, <laughs> 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 only positive comments because that's it's that's just progression. And Zach, why isn't the song not starting up again? Oh, oh, wait. You want me to, okay, I could. Oh, oh, no, no, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm turning this shit up. There we go. Uh, and all right. How can oh, these uh, good so- people out there contact us? Well, thank you also to Steven at Translatosaurus, uh, Sam, Lucky Chainsaw, and Kelly Karuri for uh, being on the podcast this week. Uh, you are Zach underscore Logan on Twitter. I am Edward E. One Piece. The podcast can be found at onepiecepodcast.com, twitter.com, facebook.com, and youtube.com slash onepiecepodcast. One Piece Podcast is our Skype name. One Piece Podcast at gmail.com is our email address. Send us some piece together. Reddit.com slash r slash onepiecepodcast. That's our subreddit. Patreon.com slash onepiecepodcast. Please support us for um, access to bonus episodes like our 500th episode, Extra Spectacular. And... Um, our, our monthly outtake extravaganzas as well. Um, but yeah, you can also subscribe on SoundCloud, subscribe on Google Play, subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Call us on our phone number, Zach. You'll never get used to that one. Uh, our phone number is 347 497 Maji. 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 That phone number again is 347 497 6254. Call anytime. Anytime. All with the your time. Que- with your questions, comments, uh, theories, and uh yeah this is this is a really good episode but we have one more segment for you guys right now oh, let's see if i have music for this sure oh this is cool so it's our uh pop quiz segment i don't know what you want to call it um so <laughs> i'm gonna just stop this or else it'll keep distracting me so we have um we've been doing quizzes at the end of all of every show uh and the way we do it is we go in the order you guys um pick the manga recap uh pages and uh so this week that'll be jeff is going to be first to bat then steve and ed uh since steven is not uh with us here at the moment um so we ask you to just name everything in a category um, and I've been using the One Piece Wiki. I want to thank everyone out there for their hard work uh, putting information together. Uh, we definitely have some, you know, it, it, there's a lot of a uh, difference of opinion we may have in what you call something uh, in the wiki versus on our podcast and versus even in the community. Um, but I've been using them as the kind of go to, so you can't say if you disagree. Sabo is how you pronounce <laughs> that. Yes. Um, so today's category are story arcs. Figure that's a pretty good way, but just story arcs before Ooh. the time skip. Okay. Okay. Um, now I'm going by their titles um, to give you a hint. They are all uh, related to the place, the location. So you're not going to want to name uh, the uh, person necessarily uh, at the center of the arc. You want to name the location. Okay. Um, so. Why don't we begin? Manga uh, or anime, Zach? Manga. No anime, all because right, all right, all right. that's starting a whole other bag of whatever. Um, so why don't we start? Uh, you're going to go around until someone either repeats one that has been said or guesses a wrong one. And once everyone uh, is, except for one person's out, we're Are we just picking so let's random, start. or is it all chronological order? Uh, no, you oh, can no. Pick, and pick random. Yeah. Okay. Anything before the time skip. And it's by location. It's not by right. They're they're named by location. Okay, all that's, right. that's 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 not normal. Yeah. Hmm. All okay. right. So Jeff. All right, Thriller Bark. Okay, that is definitely one of them. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Steve. Uh, Baratier Restaurant. Sure, <laughs> you could Baratier was good enough. Thank you, uh, Ed. <laughs> Marineford. Yes. <laughs> I was not checking my phone for answers. Jeff. <laughs> oh, it's back to me. Yeah. Um, only three years. Oh yeah. Impel down. Yes. There's actually one exception to this uh location thing, but oh. only one. Um Steve. Uh the Shabondi Archipelago. Yes. Ed. Amazon Lily. Yes. Jeff. Ooh, uh, Little Garden. Yes. Actually, there were two exceptions. I just saw one more. Uh, S- Steve. 
Uh, is any lobby an acceptable answer? Yes, that is. That is an island. Um, actually, yeah. One Piece Wiki has one of these as not the location, so I'm going to change it to the location if you get that <laughs> <Okay>. right. Um, <laughs> uh, where are we here? Um, who just went, Steve? Um, Ed. Water 7. Yep. Jeff? Alabasta. Yes. Uh, Steve? Long, long ring, long land. Correct. Ooh. Ed. Skypea. Yeah, you guys are doing well. Uh, Jeff. Uh, it's not that these are necessarily uh, hard, but it's <laughs> that you have to remember in your head what has already been said. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Three seconds. Uh, uh, East Blue. Uh, no, I'm not, sorry. Um, I can't. Yeah. I can't give that to you. Uh, <laughs> now it's a Stephen Ed left. So Steve. The former Drum Kingdom. Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, Ed. Whiskey Peak. Yes, Steve. Ooh, okay. Three seconds. Um, Twin Peaks Cape? Does that count? We treated that... That's not what that arc is called. That's not the place that it's called after. Because nope. I think I know what the <laughs> answer is. Yeah, Ed, do you want to try and steal? Reverse Mountain? Yeah. Fuck! Uh, remaining. Was the here. Said? Uh, oh, no... Uh, no, uh, it wasn't. Neither was Jaya, was and uh, neither, neither was Jaya. Mm. Neither was any of the East Blue. Ones. I didn't say Logtown because yeah. I thought it was set already. You guys, you missed Arlong Park. Um, oh, oh. I was going in reverse chronological wait, 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 order. Wait, wait, That's wait. how I was doing. Uh, how, how is Arlong Park the name? Shouldn't it be the? It's, I- a, place. it's a place. Shouldn't it be the island? Arlong Park is a place. Well, the uh, you could have picked the island too. What was that? Is the something archipelago? No, it's Kokoyashi Village. Kokoyashi Village would have been acceptable for that too. I would have taken that. Um, Orange Town. Um, oh, you could say Goa I Kingdom was, or close to the end. I was saving Shells Town to the end because I thought no one was going to get that. Shells Town. Uh, the post war is the only one I can't really think of how you would want to place that. I guess you could do what's the island next to it's Amazon, Amazon Lily? It's Amazon. No, no it's the um, island next to Amazon Lily. Not even I? No, that's the Poop Island. Um, <laughs> Syrup Village was another one. Um, that's Orange yeah. Town, isn't it? No, yeah. no, no. Orange Town is bugging. Anyway, confused. you guys right, did a good right. job. You guys did a good job yeah, on this week's we uh, just... quiz. So, Ed, congratulations. Uh, I think you and Steven are like uh, tied. I, that was my second. That's my second win. I think the only other one was I, I won the season. I still though. call both. Okay. Because that is the Twin Peaks. <laughs> I, well, I'm sorry. That's not how this game works. Besides, you said Twin Peaks, and it's the Twin Caves. So. Mm. Twin Peaks is a show. Um, and I'll, I'll also, you know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I was gonna do it. I honestly, me going oh, reading idols. Me going up. I honestly <laughs> thought if I didn't mess that one up, me and Ed were gonna tie because there was no way either of us were gonna forget. Yeah. Or did you know Shellstown, Ed? No, okay, I don't we, remember we that. We can one. talk about this all night, but I, we gotta go. Uh, Zach, Ed wins what, our what's the name of the island week? that uh, Luffy met Kobe on? Because that was in the manga. Oh, I don't know. Is that even an arc? <laughs> It's Captain Morgan arc. Oh yeah, that's a. Separate... <laughs> Is it like a chapter long? No, it's that he meets Kobe on a separate island right before he meets Captain Morgan, yeah. or is that is that yes, on the same yeah. island? Yeah, you were right. But I don't know what that is off the top mm-hmm. of my head. It's a single chapter. Who knows if it counts? Anyway, as an arc. oh, what's the well, name? Gaimon, 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 or Gaimon's island? Yeah, what's the name of Gaimon? <laughs> I think it's like Animal Kingdom or something like that. Something <laughs> it doesn't even have like an like actual. Anyway. Thing. I have. I don't know off the top of my well, head. Come on, Zach, Mr. Chicken Man. Look, man. Shut. I thought you had all the answers. Oh, fine. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Jesus Christ! It's the Island, Island of, of Rare, Rare Animals. Animals. Yeah. yeah. It's the second thing that comes up when That's you say Skymon. Um, it's an insanely <laughs> stupid name. Um, but Skymon is an insanely stupid character. Let's be I'm fair. Far too long here. Yeah, uh, just, so that's I'm having it. fun. It's nice to be doing the podcast again. I know. Um, <laughs> we will be back next week with our manga recap of Chapter 891 and an all-new anime recap and a lot more. Uh, please let us know what you thought of this uh, recording system. Um, I'm go- about to edit it now, so we'll see how what I think about this recording system. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how how it works out. But um, yeah, I thought we might as well start the year off with something experimental. And sorry if it's a little shorter than usual. We'll be back, hopefully, with a more normal length episode next week. Uh, but until then, my name is Zach. My name is Ed. And my name is Steve. Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Can you, can, can you play me out on the song? Oh, 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 of course. I'm Please. so sorry, Steve. 
Song to the song, really sucks. It really sucks. Really sucks. Oh man, we gotta go a whole year with this. I'm gonna go a whole year. I don't know what you want me to say. This song is, <laughs> is absurd. <laughs> <laughs>